Well, hello everybody. It's Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Carol Rundle here welcoming you and saying, I hope you're having a blessed oh, Hi everybody, how's everyone doing? Oh, my alarm just went off to tell me to do the scope. Yay, I'm so glad it's on top of things. Alrighty, well we've got a pretty um, awesome subject matter today. It's shut your mouth. I am from New York, I can talk like that, it's legal. Anyway, this is all about the tongue, what the Bible says about the tongue, how the tongue can bring us down, how the tongue can bring us up, and how that fits into our businesses. Okay, is everybody ready to go? I want to thank you for being here. Um, hearts, let me know that you like what I'm saying. Please invite your friends to join us. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, please let me know. I'm always here and wanting to learn a little more. Okay, I have to show you this cool graphic. I think this is fun. There you go. Watch your mouth. There we go. Okay. So, we got to back out a little bit. There we go. It is so easy to speak without thinking. Has anybody ever hands the thought falls in your head and before you even have a chance to process it, it comes out of your mouth. Thanks for the hearts, guys. I appreciate it. Yay. So, just because a thought falls in our heads doesn't mean it has to come out of our mouths and especially it doesn't mean that it has to get posted somewhere on social media. Ever notice that happens? Yeah, quite a bit. So let's look at what the word has to say about this. Job 6, 24, in the first part of verse 25. Teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words. Job is asking God to teach him how to hold his tongue. So maybe that is something that we need to be praying about. How do I control this? You know, our old man nature, which we talked about a few weeks ago, it just speaks with no consciousness of impact because the old man nature is ego-based. Thanks for the heart skies. The new man the Christ in us speaks from the spirit within. And that's the big difference. Now I want to look at, a, a, it's a fairly long section from James. You knew I was going to go there, right? But it is so important that we understand this and we get it. So let's look at James going, okay, chapter three. Starting in verse two, it says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Many of you have noticed this. Um, somebody on or some two buddies on a national talk show in the past week or so uh, said something that offended a large group of people in a certain profession. And I saw post after post after post about people who took offense. Um, the Word of God says that everybody offends in what they speak about at one time or another. Because if you can control your tongue, hey, you can control your whole body. The point is that nobody can do that. Not in the physical. Not by our, our five senses. So to take offense at what somebody else says, it, it gives off the appearance that, well, I would never do something like that. I mean, I'm so perfect, I would never say something that would offend bunches of people. But then, of course, I'm not on television. I'm just on Periscope. And I don't have millions of people in my audience, just the wonderful people who are giving me hearts. So let's go back to James. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things, Behold how great a matter 
a little fire. Exactly what happened in this example I'm talking about. Behold how great a matter this tiny little thing, the tongue, set off. It's so easy to do and we all do it. That's what the Bible says. So how do we control this? Doing in James. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. The word of God is telling us that we should not be allowing blessing and cursing to come out of our same mouth. But yet it also tells us that the tongue is unruly and it's uncontrollable. So where's the balance here? Where do you figure out how you know how to hold your tongue? You know, that's a great saying, hold your tongue when it is something that's out of control. Well, let's first of all consider what the Bible says about those who do not control their tongue. And I've titled this little section, Fools. In Proverbs 10.18, it says, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. If you ever wanted to know what a fool is, well, there you go. Proverbs 17.7 Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. And Proverbs 17, 28, Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So cool. It reminds me of my great uncle Ed. He was kind of like, he was like a grandpa to me. I, I spent a lot of time with him growing up and he lived until he was 87. You know, I was already in my thirties and he, he was just such a wonderful man, but he taught me the saying from when I was very little that, um, it's better to keep your mouth shut and to be thought of as a fool than to open your mouth and erase all doubt. And it wasn't until a lot later that I found out that this was based in this particular scripture from Proverbs. See, even if somebody is a fool, if they keep their mouth shut, nobody's going to know. It's our words that give us away. And in Proverbs 19, it says, Better is the poor that walks in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. A fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in. Ever met somebody who had diarrhea of the mouth? You know, they just, like I said at the beginning, whatever thought falls in their brains comes out of their mouth. They will tell you everything about anything. What the Bible says about that is that is the mark of a fool. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be a fool. And I'm seeing hearts here. You guys don't want to be fools either. Proverbs says, Do you see a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. You don't want to be really swift to speak. And in Ecclesiastes 10, The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow him up. And a fool is full of words. A man can't tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? One of the marks of a fool is someone who just can't keep his mouth shut. And in our business relationships, we certainly want to know the best, the wisest thing to say. Not so that we can manipulate people. I know that there are plenty of programs out there that teach you how to manipulate people with words and actions. 
What I'm talking about is speaking honestly and truthfully from your heart, but doing it in love with the love of God. When you're speaking to your customers, to your vendors, to your coworkers, to your boss, to your upline, to your downline, to your crossline, whatever kind of business you're in, you are in contact with people all the time. You may not be verbally talking to them, whether it's on the phone or in person, but we're always talking. We're talking on the phone, we're talking in email, we're talking on social media. All of this is included so when we take the time first to think, think, first we listen, listen to what they're saying to you instead of trying to have an agenda. You know, most people think with the purpose of formulating their response, right? We've all done that. But if you learn to listen, to actually hear what that person is saying so that you can respond in a way that will bless them and that will meet their needs. Now that's walking in love, right? Yeah, yeah. And of course, what do we always say? Ask God, ask God. What should I say? What should I do? There's been many times when I'll just hear that little still small voice and it says, keep quiet, say nothing, shut up. Sometimes it's just mm, zip the lips just because you know something or just because they're wrong and you know they're wrong. It's not always the best thing to do. God knows the best thing. He is working in you. His spirit in you is at work. Allow him to work, to will and to do of his good pleasure in you. If your motivation for what your conversation is about is love, then what you will say will be a blessing, not a cursing. So do you guys have any questions? It's a huge subject. We could go on and on and on. But the bottom line is silence is always better than too many words, right? Right. Okay. Well, I hope you got something out of this. I hope this will benefit you in your business, in your walk with God, in your love life with God. So have a great week. I am looking forward to seeing you next time. As always, you can reach me on Twitter, on Periscope, on Facebook, on email, on my website. Love you guys. Have a blessed afternoon and we'll talk soon.